Right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Mark Stephan Felix. Uh, my students here call me Ajan Mark, right? And that's a name that I've become very used to. If anybody calls me Dr. Felix, I get confused because I don't know who that is. <laughs> Since I came to Thailand, everybody calls me Ajan Mark, Ajan Mark. I'm like, one day I was walking through the market. A student of mine saw me and said, good afternoon, Dr. Felix. And I didn't answer. I'm like, oh, you're talking to me. Oh, hi. Okay, I am I'm a lecturer with the uh, Department of Society and Health with the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities and it's such a pleasure to be with all of you today. Now, I understand that we have some guests from Indonesia. Will our guests from Indonesia kindly raise their hands? How many guests from Indonesia? Sorry? 53. Okay, jadi bagi kawan-kawan kami dari negara Indonesia, <laughs> saya ingin mengucapkan selamat datang bagi bagi pihak saya dan juga bagi pihak fakultas penuntut pasca siswaza selamat datang ke Universitas Mahidon dan saya berharap yang pada hari ini saya boleh membentangkan. Uh, not so good these days. Saya boleh membentangkan pelajaran yang boleh membawakan manfaat kepada kita semua. Boleh? Okay, very good. To all of my students from Thailand. Who's from Thailand? We've got a lot of international students here. Myanmar. Nyo, put up your hand quick. You're one of mine. <laughs> Cambodia. Laos. People's Democratic Republic of Laos. Vietnam. Nice big representation from I Vietnam. Anybody from Malaysia? Oh, thank God. <laughs> India. Thank you. Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka. No. Bangladesh? Pakistan? Nepal? Very good. Any other country that I haven't named yet in the China, the People's Republic of China. Yes, where are you from, please, sir? You're from Yemen. Any other of our other students from the uh, Middle Eastern countries? Yemen, where are you from, sir, please? You're from Iran, very nice. So we've got a very nice mix this afternoon of students. I, I need to ask these ladies here, uh, Semuanya nampak muda, semua penuntut ataupun dosen. Mix, penuntut dan dosen. Okay, our guests from Indonesia this afternoon, they're a mix of both um, students and also academic staff. Okay, so whether we are from Thailand, Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, wherever, or whether we are students or we are academic staff. The one thing that is expected of all of us is to publish, right? How many academic staff in the room? Can you please raise your hands? Siapa dosen? Oh, dosen semua telah lari ke, ke Bangkok untuk pergi shopping, ya? Semua sudah lari ke sana, pergi Pratunam, pergi Sayang Paragon, right? Whether you're an academic staff or whether you are a student, the university or our universities demand that we publish, okay? For PhD students here at Mahidon University, you have to be published at least once in a Scopus listed journal. If you are an academic staff member, our bosses, their favorite words to us are, when are you publishing? When are you publishing? And then when you publish, when are you publishing again? When are you publishing again? So it's actually a huge part of our lives, okay? What they demand from us in publication is to be able to make a contribution to the universal body of knowledge, okay? The thing is, there's this huge demand for all of us to publish. PhD students from Mahidon, we are the PhD students from Mahidon. All of us, all of you, I should say, not us, all of you have to publish at least, don't, don't hide, right? This is really bad when one of my students is in the audience, right? All of you have to publish at least once 
before you graduate. In order to graduate, you must meet the publication requirements. My students come to me and they say, Ajahn, can I publish this? And it's very difficult for me. You know why? They don't follow certain rules. Let me be very, very clear as we begin. Okay? Let me, sorry, let me first introduce, I haven't fin I finished introducing myself. I published a few times, a few more coming out, and at present I'm a guest editor with the Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Okay? This is based out of the Philippines. So I'm able to share with you information from both the side of someone who submits manuscripts for publication and someone who actually reads manuscripts that come in and then decide whether A, they get published with no corrections, B, they get published with major corrections, or C, the manuscript is rejected. Okay? So I'm able to give you information from both sides, whether as a writer, an author, or as someone who actually goes through manuscripts. So like I was saying, when my students come to me and they say, Ajahn, can I publish this? It's very difficult for me to tell the student no. Because there are certain rules that you have not followed. Okay? These rules that I'm going to share with you today, and also hopefully I will give you all some skills, will actually help you to get published, preferably before your viva voce. You all are looking at me like, what on earth is that? Before your, your uh, dissertation or thesis defense. Because it's a good thing to try and get published before your dissertation defense. That way, your paperwork, your application to complete your studies can go through very, very smoothly. Okay? As Nong just now, our MC said, my area is in health communication, but I also have a background in sexuality studies. And since I moved here to Mahidon, I've been doing a lot of work in academic writing. So hopefully what I share with you today will be able to help you. So what is academic writing? Oh, wrong slide. Hello. Okay? Please understand. Academic writing is not writing a story, okay? We are, not, we are not writing a romance novel. We are not rewriting, and this is for all of our guests from Indonesia, we are not rewriting Hikayat Sang Sapurba, okay? A very, very long story of about, I don't know, 300 pages. And the only re reason I remember that name is because I had to study it for my Malay literature class as, an, uh, uh, as a pre-university student in Malaysia, right? Academic writing is not a disorganized mix of ideas, information, and statistics. Now, what happens when you actually do your research for your dissertation? You get all of this wonderful information, all of your data, and you think, okay, this is what I'll do to get published. I will go to my chapter one. I will highlight the first page, control C. Then I will go to a new document, control V. <laughs> I will go to my chapter two, highlight some pages, control C. Go back to the other document, control V. <laughs> chapter three, methodology, control C. Control V. And then you come to your chapter four. Highlight everything, control C, control V, control C, control V, control C, control V. And then you submit it. It becomes this a disorganized mix of ideas, information, and statistics. And then when you get a letter or an email from a publication that says, Dear so and so, thank you very much for your submission to the International Journal of Public Health. Unfortunately, your submission does not meet our requirements. We thank you very much for your submission, and we hope that you will send us another submission soon. And you sit at your computer, and then you cry. I'm so smart. Why they don't publish me? It is because if you follow 
this culture of copy and paste, you will have a disorganized mix of ideas, information, and statistics. A manuscript for publication is, not, is also not an emotional response to academic issues. Okay? Will my students please raise their hands? Oh, why are you all hiding behind? You all wait until the next class, you all wait. Right? You all have heard me tell this story before, so it's going to be boring to you all. Your manuscript cannot be an emotional response where you go, there are many poor people in Medan. They are poor because they suffer. They suffer because they are poor. And because they are poor, they suffer. My heart is sad because they suffer. And because they suffer, I am also poor. Please publish. No. In publication, in publication, the editors and the peer reviewers are looking for very specific information. They are looking for very specific things such as a direction of your research with very specific outcomes. All right? With that being said, academic writing for publication is a clear statement of the academic issue being tackled. It's not enough to say there are a lot of poor people in Medan, Sumatra. How many people from Sumatra? That is, eh, banyaknya. <laughs> Banyak juga, ya? Eh? Betul-betul kita jiran, ya? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> to my students from Myanmar who don't understand, and now you all know what I feel like when you all talk in the pantry while you all eat lunch. <laughs> right? It is a clear statement of the academic issue being tackled. You cannot just say, there are a lot of poor people in Medan. You have to be able to explain how is poverty in Medan connected to the issue that you are studying, whether it is from an economic standpoint, a health standpoint, a statistics standpoint, a public health standpoint, a demographic standpoint, you must be able to explain what is the focus of your research. Okay? Second thing, it is structured to form a logical academic debate. Okay? Unless any of you here in this room are named Michel Foucault or Karl Marx, or one of these philosoph uh, philosophical geniuses that we have to cite and quote and use as theoretical uh, geniuses for our framework, right? You need to be able to add to the academic debate. And when I say debate, what I mean is this. You take an objective stance. I will cover this later on, okay? you need to be able to approach writing your manuscript from an objective academic standpoint. You cannot just say, this is so sad. Yeah? It's like, you know, Sandiwara, you know? <laughs> right? To, to, my, to all of my students from Thailand, it's like Lakon, you know? All the Lakon are the same, right? Good guy, bad guy. Bad guy will hurt good guy. Then the good girl will cry. And then there's always an evil woman. And I noticed this in Southeast Asia. There's always an evil woman in the movie. And the more evil she is, the bigger her hair. I can say that. I have no hair. That's fine. <laughs> right? So I can't be evil, right? Right, my students? <laughs> right? Academic writing for publication needs to be organized to present a clear academic debate. There is a difference between structure and organization. You will not achieve this if you only copy and paste. All right? Every academic paper that you write has to have an original thought behind it and 
it should start with a very strong academic idea of what you want to present. Finally, academic writing is written professionally with academic objectivity. I just reviewed a paper and I had to tell the editor-in-chief that this paper has to be rejected simply because the person submitted a manuscript that to me is just really good for a conceptual framework. 30 pages, I had to read 30 pages. You know how painful that is? I had to read 30 pages and it said, ethical business practices are like this. Okay? Catholic principles are like this. That means it's good. That's all. It did not go any further. You need to be able to write object objectively so that your reader gets both sides of the idea. Okay? Unless, how many pure science students here? Pure sciences? Pure sciences? See, pure sciences, you guys have it luckier than us in social sciences. The experiment either works or it doesn't work. Right? You take water, you mix it with, you know, coffee, you get coffee. You cannot mix water with sugar and get coffee, right? The experiment works. It's either yes or no. How many of you are in the social sciences? Public health? Semua dari fakultas apa ni? Kesihatan. Oh... Semuanya nurse, jururawat, kan? Eh, bukan, midwife. <laughs> jurulahir. <laughs> Itu perkataan baru untuk saya, jurulahir. Jururawat, saya tahu. Juru terbang, saya tahu. <laughs> Yang itu semua, okay, they are in the medical sciences, they are in midwifery, they help to deliver babies. Okay? Babies, also very easy. Either the baby is coming out or the baby is not. <laughs> At that time. If the baby needs to come out, but the baby doesn't want to come out, C-section. It's as simple as that, right? But when you write, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot just, ladies I should say, you cannot just say, okay, for a C-section, just cut it open, <laughs> pull the baby out, and that's the end of the story. You need to be also be able to explain. So, when you write, you have to write with a great deal of ob objectivity in mind. So, why is all of this important to know for publication? And this is where there's a lot of mistakes. Though there are a lot of mistakes. Now, publication in a journal is a result of stringent and high-quality standards. In order for any journal to qualify as a Scopus-listed journal, it has to go through a peer review process, right? For example, if you write a paper on midwifery, you write a paper, you send it to the uh, journal, the journal will give it to two academic experts on midwifery to look through the paper to see if it is current, yeah, pelajaran yang baru, new knowledge, whether it has impact on the present practice of midwifery now, right? Or number three, whether it is something so cutting edge that they have no choice but to publish it. These are very high quality standards. I get an email every day from a different journal that tells me, send your manuscript to us. We will answer you tomorrow if you are going to be published. If you start getting emails like that, ladies and gentlemen, do not send your manuscripts there. Because the first thing they're going to say is, congratulations! We will publish your manuscript. Please pay us 30 US dollars a page. If a journal asks you to pay to publish, it means it is not a Scopus-listed journal, and it means there are no quality standards. You waste your talent. I'll come back to that point afterwards. So, you need to follow these standards because publication requires submitted manuscripts to be of the highest standards upon initial submission. The process is this. 
you submit your article to your manuscript to the editor, the editor will read through it once and then decide yes or no. All right? Very easy decision to make. Yes or no. If it's yes, maybe in one week, you will get a letter that says, thank you so much for your submission. We will begin the peer review process now. If no, you will get a letter that says, thank you very much for your submission. However, it does not meet our requirements. We wish you the very best of luck. Please send us another manuscript soon. And third, to clear her, you, you need to know academic writing so that you can clear hurdles in publication. In order to do that, manuscripts must be academic, they must be structured, organized, and well written. I don't think I've told y'all anything y'all don't know yet. How many of y'all have tried to publish so far? I should say, how many of you have published so far? Congratulations. 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 Anybody else? I'm giving out congratulations for free right now. <laughs> Quick, while the offer is good. Right? How many of you are in the process of getting published? That means you've submitted a manuscript and you're still waiting. Very good. Congratulations. How many of y'all have tried... How many of... <clears throat> Watch where my eyes go. How many of y'all have tried publishing before? <laughs> I love bullying my students. Yeah. That's how I show I love them, okay? So, in order, if you are going to start, if you are going to start, you need to understand it is not a simple, straightforward process, okay? You need to be able to meet certain requirements in order to get published. You cannot, you cannot send, and I'll cover this in more detail la la uh, later, you cannot send your manuscript to an editor and say, please, please publish me. I finished my defense six months ago. I need my PhD so I can become an Adan. They're not going to listen. These are all professional organizations. So you need to follow their rules if you want to get published. Okay, take from this side, it's better looking. <laughs> okay? So what are these rules? And here are some things I'm going to share with you, ladies and gentlemen. First thing, know your audience. Know who your audience is, okay? It's just like if you were an up-and-coming singer or a famous singer like Ariana Grande. Do you, do you all know who Ariana Grande is? Thank goodness. If you're a young singer like Ariana Grande, where, what would be your good audience? A good audience would be teenagers. Right? You would, Ariana Grande would not sing to people of my age. Don't ask how old I am. Okay? They would not, uh, Ariana Grande would not come and sing to me because I'll say, oh God, another one. Right? You need to know who is your audience. And if you're going to submit a manuscript, you need to know who your audience is. In this case, you have two audiences. First of all, the editors. Secondly, the peer reviewers. So let's find out what do editors look for. First of all, manuscripts that meet the focus of the journal. Okay? If the journal, for example, is the International Journal of Public Health, what do they want to know? What kind of manuscripts will they publish? What kind of manuscripts will they accept? Okay, I'll say the name again. International Journal of Public Health. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> they would want to publish articles about public health. So if you send in an article or a manuscript, okay, about disciplinary problems among undergraduate students, they're not going to publish it. 
you need to know what the journal is focusing on. Now, some journals have got very strange titles. Okay? International Journal of Social Science. And you say, I'm an economics student. Economics is a social science. They'll publish me. But you need to go in deeper and find out maybe the International Journal of Social Sciences focuses on maybe political issues. They may not call themselves the International Journal of Politics, right? But that is what they focus on. Some journals are very straightforward. For example, The Lancet. What do they publish? The Lancet. L-A-N-C-E-T. Lancet? Come on. The Lancet publishes cutting-edge research articles on medicine. Okay? It's on medicine, perubatan. Okay? So if you, send, if you send your article on public health to The Lancet, will The Lancet publish it? No. They will send you a letter back in one week that says, thank you very much for <laughs> your submission. Unfortunately, it does not meet our requirements. Number two, your subject matter and content has to be original and built on a strong academic foundation, and it has to be current. What is happening in your field of study now? All right? They want to know what is trending, what is trendy, and what is popular now. For example, for example, what is the latest um, for the social scientists in the room? Okay? What is the latest trend in Southeast Asia? What is the latest trend? What is the latest social cultural trend in Southeast Asia? Very simple, K-pop. K-pop. If you write a paper on music from the 1980s, they're not going to worry about it. If the health issues in the world today are about re-emerging diseases, okay, and you write about non-communicable diseases, it's not going to fit. You need to be on point you need to be current. Now, manuscripts that are well written showing a clear delineation of the academic argument that is presented and the logical and factual flow of ideas and data. You know why? It's easier to read. Ultimately, who is going to be reading all of these academic articles? Students. Ajans like me, you and me. It has to be easy to read. In order to make it easy to read, it has to be logical and have a factual flow. And finally, you have to make assertions that are based on data that is scientifically solid and of interest to your readers. Okay? I have seen manuscripts where they send in my opinion is, my opinion is, for ASEAN, this is what we need to do. For ASEAN, we need to do that. For ASEAN, we need to do any kind of thing. But where is the scientific data to back it up? Because there is no scientific data, it is rejected. Okay? You need to have, this is the difference, ladies and gentlemen, between a manuscript for academic publication in a journal, right, and writing your latest Facebook post. Okay, I see lots of Facebook posts, right? For those of you all who haven't figured it out yet, I'm actually from Malaysia, right? What is Malaysia famous for? Right now, what is Malaysia famous for? Corruption, okay? Hey, I'm, it's okay. 
it's okay. Special branch of police from Malaysia cannot arrest me. I'm not in Malaysia right now. Okay? You need to find out what is happening now. How does it impact society now? How does it impact your readers now? And you need to be able to find the scientific data. On Facebook, because of the political and the economic situation in Malaysia, a lot of people post on Facebook, this is bad, this is good, we should do this, we should do that, this is wrong, this is right. But where is the scientific data to back it up? Okay? This is what makes, the scientific data is what makes publication or makes editors want to publish your manuscript. The second thing, or the second audience that looks at your paper are reviewers. The peer reviewers, the ones that actually have the job of reading your manuscripts. Okay? I'll let you know this. Very often, peer reviewers don't get paid anything. They don't, seriously, we don't get paid anything. But we set aside a Saturday morning or a Sunday night and we spend three hours reading an article. And then we stop and we think, is this good? Is this bad? Okay, tomorrow we'll read it again. And then we look at it again and then we say, maybe yes, maybe no. Or sometimes, if you're an academic and you're very busy, you have classes to teach, you have research to do, you have your own manuscripts to write, you will say, I'll wait. <laughs> I will wait. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, it takes so long to get published. Look. I sent in one manuscript in June 2015. June 2015. In October, I got the letter that said, we will publish it in March 2017. Hold on. We will send you the final copy for proofreading before we publish. It's supposed to be next month, right? Ten days time, less than ten days time, right? Most likely, they are going to postpone it to the middle of the year. If they postpone it to the middle of the year, that's June 2017. I have to wait two years to get one article published. And this is the reality. You can cut that time down by making sure your writing is clear. Because if it takes the reviewer a long time to read, the longer then it will take for them to say yes or no to your manuscript. Next one, your focus of the research must be definitive. That means that it has to be really focused with a research focus that is unquestionably met. Academic debate that is well-rounded and balanced. You must have a methodology that is scientifically sound and clearly explained and findings and discussions that prove or disprove the initial academic assertion of the author. <coughs> This is what reviewers look for, excuse me. If you don't have this, ladies and gentlemen, the reviewer has a very simple job. They fill out a form. I'll pull out one of the forms I use afterwards. You fill out a form and you just click X on the right box. Publish publish with major corrections or reject, okay? So you need to know who your audience is. And in this case, the maybe the three most important people will be the editor and your two peer reviewers, all right? Knowing your audience really helps because you will then know how to structure and how to organize your paper. So, with that being said, what are some common mistakes when students or anybody, or even Ajans, we do it too, when we submit a manuscript? What makes our manuscripts get rejected? First of all, poor grammar and poor spelling. Poor grammar and poor spelling. A colleague of mine sent me an email and said, Mark, take a look at this. Just read the abstract. Tell me what you think. I read the abstract. I did not know what the author was saying at all. 
I closed the Microsoft window. You know, I didn't close. I, you know, decreased it. I played on Facebook for five minutes. Clear my head. I either play on Facebook or I watch videos of kittens. Clear my head. I pulled the abstract back up and I read it again. I said, I cannot understand what this abstract is about. Because the grammar was so bad. The grammar was so bad. Spelling, ladies and gentlemen. Find out if the journal prefers American English spelling or British, um, uh, British English, uh, English spelling. There's a difference. Sometimes when you type, Microsoft Word is as bad as autocorrect. Right? It will just change the word. And when you change the word, when you write in English, it changes the meaning. When you change the meaning and it confuses the editor or the peer reviewer, the chances are higher that your manuscript will be rejected. Second one, poor writing in the form of insufficient explanation, details and unfinished ideas. What do you mean by insufficient explanation? We live in a globalized world, and I notice this. A lot of people love writing papers about globalization. And ever since we started the ASEAN Economic Community, right, they love writing about regionalization. And so you have wonderful statements like this. Globalization is all over the world. What is globalization? Which part of globalization are you focusing on? What are the details? What are the details? Many people die from re-emerging diseases in Southeast Asia. Which re-emerging disease? Which re-emerging disease? Okay? This paper will focus on the problems of people in Southeast Asia. Really? How many people in Southeast Asia? No, let, let's just do a... a, a yes, you, you, you... No. Okay. Thailand has a, a population of 67 million. Correct? Malaysia has about 28 million. Indonesia? One... 250 million. You're going to write a paper about everybody's problems, is it? The writing is not clear. Another common mistake is manuscript that is disorganized, poorly structured, poorly written, and poorly developed. Now, this is, my students will, will understand because I've told them this story before. You read all of these journals, you think about your conceptual framework, you think about your theoretical framework, your research question, your research objectives, the problem statement that you want, the significance of the study. Where is all of that information? Where is all of that information? It's in here, right? All of that information is here. The only way other people know about that information is if you write it down or if you publish or you speak it. But if your ideas are here, you know, globalization is this, globalization is that, blah, 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 you think everybody else will understand when you write that globalization. No. Your idea of globalization will be very different from my idea of globalization. This is what I mean by an unfinished idea. Explain exactly which part of globalization you are focused on. If you're talking about non-communicable diseases, which non-communicable disease are you focused on? Right? Please, don't think, don't think that your PhD supervisor or your master supervisor, yes, we have PhDs. But that, I'm, I'm going to say something that is going to be very controversial. But that doesn't mean we know everything. Okay? 
And when you say, so, and when you write, globalization is a problem in Southeast Asia, full stop, it's okay. Ajahn Mang is very smart, he'll know exactly what I mean. No, you get an evil Ajahn like me, I will write a red line underneath the sentence, followed by three question marks. And then I will say, Tung, come and see me and explain this, please. Right? You need to be able to explain. Finish the explanation for your idea. The next common mistake is sending the manuscript to an inappropriate journal. I've already covered that point. A manuscript that is disorganized, poorly structured, poorly written, and poorly developed. Now this one. The unrealistic expectation that the manuscript is perfect upon submission. Well, you know, because I'm so smart. I've written this wonderful paper about public health and the needs of, you know, the migrant workers of Kanchanaburi and how mosquito nets can cut the number of malaria infections in half. They will publish it. They will call me tomorrow. They will publish it. They will give me a Nobel Peace Prize. No. Think about, let's be realistic, ladies and gentlemen. If the manuscript is a high-quality, high-impact, Scopus-listed journal, everybody is sending their manuscript to them. That's number one. It will take a long time. Number two, your point of view is going to be very different from that of the editors and the peer reviewers. Okay? And finally, another common mistake is over-philosophizing that is substantiated poorly or with only emo emotional or personal bias. Okay? The philosophy of the country is this. We are fantastic. We are the best in Southeast Asia. We are the only ones who can do this. We are the best. I'm talking about Singaporeans here. Huh? So, some of y'all catch the joke. Okay, good. Right? We are the best. And then therefore, we must do... That. No. Journals, high-impact journals, don't care. They care only about the content of your manuscripts. So how do you, ladies and gentlemen, get published with so many hurdles? Today, I'm going to deal with this big question. How do we get over these hurdles? Have a goal, have strong strategies, and have workable tactics. What is the difference between a goal, a strategy, and a tactic. Can anybody tell me? All the football fans out there, cricket fans, basketball fans, electric fans, nobody. Okay, let me use a very common example. It's something that we all can... It's something that we all can, um, I think, relate to. Let's say your goal in life, excuse me, old man need to sit down after 45 minutes, right? What if your goal in life is to become a millionaire? Sorry, millionaire in US dollars, huh? I'm going to Jakarta in a few weeks, yeah? I'll have millions of rupiah in my wallet, it's okay. Right? What if your goal is to become a millionaire, how do you become a millionaire? Don't say, if I become a lecturer, I'll become a millionaire. It won't happen. From experience, I can tell you no. <laughs> right? Your goal is to become a millionaire. How do you do it? Work hard. Work hard. Many migrant laborers work hard. Are they millionaires? Many academics like me, we work very hard. Are we millionaires? 
If my students say yes, smack them for me. How do you become a millionaire? Sorry? Be an entrepreneur. Does all business make you a millionaire? Not necessarily. Look, I'm going to use this example. If your goal is to become a millionaire, there are many strategies you can use. You can become, a uh, you can become an entrepreneur. You can work very hard. Listen, I'm not advocating this, but it's an idea. You can rob a bank. <laughs> or, 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 you can marry a very rich person. Ini semua jahat! Look, you can marry someone rich, right? What makes you think a rich man wants to marry you? So, out of these four strategies, ladies and gentlemen, you can become an entrepreneur, you can work very hard, you can rob a bank, and you can marry someone rich. Let's say you, s you decide, my strategy is I'm going to marry someone rich. Okay? That's your strategy. What would be your tactics? What would be your tactics? No, look, look. I am not advocating this behavior. It is just an example, okay? If I hear anybody doing it, I learn from Ajahn Mark, I tell you. Right? This is what you do, right? I would make sure, first of all, let's say I want to marry someone rich. What is a good tactic, first of all? Wow, the women are very fast. Make yourself beautiful. Okay, tactic number one, I go for plastic surgery. Tactic number two, I go for hair transplant. Tactic number three, I go and buy myself an expensive suit from Hugo Boss. Tactic number five, I borrow my friend, no, not my friend, I borrow my student's Lamborghini. I have a student who drives a Lamborghini, okay? I'm like, heart pain, right? Sakit hati tau, tengok anak murid dengan Lamborghini. I will go and borrow my student's Lamborghini. Wait, not finished yet. Where would I go? Would I stay here in Mahidon University? No. Where would I drive the Lamborghini, you know, with my new plastic surgery? My Where would I drive it to? Siam Paragon. No, I would drive to the Bangkok Turf Club, you know, where all the horse racing happens. A lot of rich people there, right? It's not enough to drive my car in there. I have to walk out, open, no, wait for the valet to open the door, take the keys here, park my car. I would have to go and dig out the bottom of my bank account and then bet on a horse. Five thousand, no, not 50,000 baht on number seven. And then everybody will think, oh, he's a rich man. Who will come after that? Will I ever get married to anybody rich if I keep standing here and giving you all this talk? No, so I'm going to the Bangkok Turf Club now, bye. <laughs> right? You have to follow. Look, if your goal is to get published, right? You must follow certain strategies and tactics. It's not enough to say, I want to get published. It's the same like saying, I want to be a millionaire, and then you sit in your house. <laughs> Every night you watch K-drama. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I know people whose lives are controlled by K-drama, okay? <laughs> hey, would you want to come out tonight? No, tonight K-drama on. 
Have you finished? Uh, this is for my, my undergraduate students. Have you finished your assignment? No, yesterday, K-drama. I said, I give you drama then, you know. Right? You need to have a goal. You need to use the right strategies. And you need to use the right tactics. So let's start, ladies and gentlemen. What is our goal? In academic writing, you cannot just say my goal is to get published. You must have several goals. Your first goal is this. Have a sharp focus of research in the manuscript that possesses academic merit. You have to make the tough decision for yourself and ask yourself, is the subject I am going to write on current trendy and fits into what everybody wants to learn right now. You have to make that decision. That is why when my students come to me and they say, Ajahn, can this be published? I'm like, very difficult to say. Very, very difficult to say. So that's the first goal. Second goal, have clarity of writing that is well-structured, organized and explanatory without spelling and grammatical errors. That's another goal. Because remember, this is what the editors and the peer reviewers look for. Next one. Show sections of the manuscript that are interlinked. Now this is the part, this is the part where for my students who have survived my seminar class, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I always focus on this. Make sure that your manuscript is connected from beginning to end. The logic of your argument is seen from beginning to end. Look, I like using this example. I once reviewed a paper, and I'm, I cannot give you all the details, okay, because I have to protect privacy as well. It's part of my job as a reviewer. But this is what happens. This is how the story went. There was once a magic river. At the end of a magic river, there was a golden flower. When the golden flower bloomed and opened its petals, a fairy princess flew out. The fairy princess flew and went up to the magic fairy tree. From the magic fairy tree, the fairy princess saw a handsome fairy prince. The fairy princess flew to the handsome fairy prince and they got married. Therefore, the problem is globalization. Where is the link? from the first line of your abstract to the last sentence of your conclusion, your argument has to be interlinked. It has to show a logical flow of, the th of thought and a firm stance on an academic subject. Okay? Look, when I was a student at University of Science Malaysia a few years ago, right, I'm not going to tell you all my age, right, I used to have the master's students come to me and say, right, Abang Mark, <laughs> to, all of, to all of my students in Thailand, that's the same as Pi Mark. Pi Mark kothot na kap. Mi wela mai. Do you have time to help me? And they say, I want to send this paper to a conference. Can you please look at it? And I'm like, sure, I'll help you. More than happy to help anybody. And I look at the paper and I'm like, what exactly are you talking about? Because all you have here is copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I'm not sure what you are saying. And you know what was said to me? Never mind what I'm saying. Can go for conference or not? If it doesn't make sense, how are you supposed to present this at a conference? 
it doesn't make sense because you're not linking together the ideas. You're not showing how there is a cause and effect. You're not showing how the ideas are joined. Okay? So, let's have these as our goals, ladies and gentlemen. Having a sharp focus, clarity of writing, and sections of the manuscript that are interlinked. How do we do it? How to have a sharp focus of research in the manuscript that possesses academic merit? Now, the first item the editor and peer reviewers will look at is the abstract. Ask yourself, does your abstract have a definitive purpose with academic merit? I've seen many abstracts. This paper is about globalization. End. How do we develop that idea? For example, this manuscript focuses on globalization and its impact on the migrant labor population and their psychosocial needs within the context of, I don't know, Kuala Kubu Baru Selangor, Malaysia. Right? What exactly is your paper about? What is the definitive purpose of this paper? Does it have academic merit? Or are you just complaining about your government the way I do? Right? That's the good thing about Malaysians. Oh, we're all junior politicians. Right? Next, does it have a clear direction of what the manuscript has to offer? Does it show strong methodological science, uh, a, a strong methodological science? What research methodology did you use? Or what is your research methodology? Okay? Are your findings, are your findings compelling enough? Are your findings, right, suggestive enough of a particular issue? Does it have findings or recommendations that are based on fact and not only opinion. I say this because years ago I was helping out a student. This was when I was already here in Mahidon. And I won't mention where the student is from, but the student said, Ajahn, my country has a lot of problems. If the United Nations would give NGOs in my country more money, all the problems will be solved. Uh, you want to become rich, work for NGO. They make a lot of money. Okay? I said, no. If NGOs give more, uh, if, if the United Nations gives NGOs lots of money, that doesn't mean the problem will disappear. In fact, it will create more problems. Right? And this student said to me, no, Ajahn. As long as WHO, UNAIDS, USAID, United Nations gives more funding to NGOs in my country, all social problems will be solved. I said, no, more social problems will occur. More social problems will occur. And I said, look, look at it this way, okay? If I keep giving you money every day, will you learn how to work? If I cook, okay, five-star meal, <laughs> Right? Three-star Michelin for you every day. Will you learn how to cook? No. If I do your homework for you every day, will you learn? No. It's the same thing as NGOs being given money all the time. And we've seen this. The fact is this. When I was studying in Malaysia, I was also uh, completing my fellowship with an NGO. And every year, they were getting lots of money from the UN. Suddenly, the UN said, no more money for you. What happened to the NGO? We didn't close. We went from 18 staff to 3 staff. Because that's all the money that was left to support the NGO. I said, factually, if you go and you look at the statistics, in countries where there have been a lot of foreign aid, when the foreign aid goes out, the country suffers. 
guess what the student said to me? Yes, Ajahn, I know, I understand. But if the United Nations gives the NGOs more money, all the problems in my country will be solved. I said, no point talking to you. There really is no point. Okay? We need to be able to base our writing, our manuscripts on fact. Where do the facts come from? Thank you very much. From your data. From your s data that has been received from or through a scientific methodology. This is what interests publishers, editors, and peer reviewers. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the handout given to you, we're going to do, I'm going to give you some time to do an exercise in abstract writing. Now, all of you have an area of research interest, am I correct? Except maybe our guest from Indonesia. <laughs> Maybe, right? In your introduction or your background, ask the question, does this show academic merit, focus and direction of research and a compelling academic argument? Second, your methodology. Is your methodology scientific? Meaning, does it show stringent scientific process? Findings. Are your findings new, fresh, compelling and significant? Fourth, your discussion, is your discussion objective with academic neutrality and is it based on facts? So, if you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, the next two pages, I've given you space for work, right? If you could just turn to those two pages and I'm going to give you five minutes, okay? Five minutes for me to drink water <laughs> and all of that, right? And I want you to write an abstract. It doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be fully completed, but I want to challenge you to actually follow this. As you write your introduction, ask yourself, does this introduction show academic merit, focus and direction of research and a compelling academic argument? Second part, in your methodology, is your methodology scientific? Meaning, does it show stringent scientific process? Third one for your findings, fourth for your discussion. Okay? I think they printed it out. I think it's on the next page. Yeah, I think it's on the next page. Right? So, I'm going to give you five minutes. Don't just write, oh, this manuscript is so beautiful because the fairy princess came. No. Ask yourself, based on your area of research, does your introduction show the focus, the academic merit, and the direction of your research? Five minutes. Let's go.
if you have any questions, just raise your hand. I'll come to you, okay? Yes. Two more minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't worry, it's not an exam. Ini bukan peperiksaan, ya? One more minute. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please stop, all right? I want you to now look at what you have written. And this part is very difficult. It's a very difficult part of doing academic writing for publication. It's called being honest and critical of yourself. Look at what you have written and ask, does your introduction show academic merit focus and direction of research. Let's start with that first. Look at what you have written for introduction or background. Ask yourself, does it have academic merit, focus and direction? Okay? Look at your work. Don't, don't look at me. The answer's not on my forehead. It's not printed on the top of my head, no. It's there in what you have written. Okay?
Look at it. Ask yourself, is there anything you can do to make your two sentences for your introduction better? Look at what you have written and ask, what can you do as an author or writer to make your introduction or background statement better? Okay, some, a lot of people say, oh, when you're published, it means, you know, you have a huge ego. No. Because in order to get published, you actually have to kill your own ego in order to be able to look at your own mistakes and what you can do to make yourself better. Second, look at your methodology. Is your methodology scientific? And does it show, more importantly, stringent scientific process? Or does it just say something simple like a qualitative research methodology was used? Did you show how your research was scientifically done? Adakah ia mengikut prinsip-prinsip yang bersaintifik? Challenge yourself. This is all part of academic writing. And if you want to get published, you have to be able to look at your own work and be critical of it. Okay? Then ask yourself, are your findings, what you have written, what you have written in, in the exercise, are your findings new, fresh, compelling and significant. What's new? Is there something new? Or are you just showing, yeah, uh, the number of HIV cases in Kuala Lumpur are going up. Is that new? Hello? <laughs> no. If you say, Migrant workers suffer. Is that new? No. Your data, does it show something that is significant where the editor and the peer reviewer will read it and say, aha, this is something new. This is something fresh. This is something that deserves to be published. Okay? And finally, your discussion or your recommendations. Okay? Are they academically neutral and based on fact? This is where a lot of writers make a mistake. This part. The data shows that all migrant workers suffer. I'll tell you the truth. I'm a migrant worker. I don't suffer. My students make me suffer. Different thing. Okay? Does your discussion have academic neutrality? Or are you making sweeping statements such as all migrant workers suffer? This protocol will help all people with cancer, right? All the beaches in, I, uh, let me think of a really nice beach resort somewhere. All the beaches in Phuket are clean. Are you being objective and are you being neutral? Okay? When you can present an abstract, 
that meets this, it catches the eye of the reviewer and the editor. Okay? Now, before I move on to sharp focus, the gentleman there had a question. And it's, what is the difference between organization and structure? Okay? Before I move on to this, let me just explain what I mean. Structure is this. All academic papers must have first what? What must they have first? What's the first section they must have? Hello? Introduction? No. The first section that they must have is an abstract. Title, right? Okay. But when we look at it from sections, the first section, right? The first part of the structure is the abstract. The second part of the structure is the introduction. Some, some writers and some journals might, will ask you to separate introduction and literature review. If they ask you to separate, the next part is the literature review. The fourth part will be the research design or the research methodology of the methodology of the methodology and methods. The fifth part will be the, the results or the findings. The final part will be discussion. After discussion, conclusion. After conclusion, wow, recommendations. After your recommendations, your references. Right? This is what we mean by a structure. Organization is different. Organization is how you look at each section, the information, the content in each section, and organize it to fit your academic argument. All right? It is how you take the content run it through this wonderful, wonderful thing called your brain and you present it in such a way that it meets academic requirements and it meets academic merit requirements. Okay? So structure is structure. It's pretty much standard for all academic journals. Organization is how you organize your content to put forward a strong academic argument. Okay? The answer your question, sir. You're welcome. Right? Now, the next part is have a sharp focus of research in the manuscript that possesses academic merit. Now, the introduction in your manuscript is the first thing an, e an editor and peer reviewer will read. Does the introduction in the manuscript pr possess a clear academic debate? What is your paper about? What is your paper about? The use of mosquito nets in preventing malaria in rural areas of Java. I don't even know if Java has a rural area. Sumatra. Okay. I have to check out. I'm going to Java. <laughs> I'm going to Java next month. Right? What actually is the academic debate? The academic debate could be, are mosquito nets enough? Is education of public health enough to prevent a major outbreak of dengue? What exactly are you questioning in your manuscript? Does it have a definitive statement of the direction or focus of the research within the academic debate? And is your research question and research objectives clear enough that build into the direction and focus within the area of research that ties into the academic debate. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to read here. It's in your notes. It's in your handouts. Read it. I'm going to give you two minutes. Please read this. Read that page.
Ladies and gentlemen, have you all finished reading? Let me ask you, is this a good introduction? No. Why? Exactly. Very good, young lady. Nama siapa? Pratiwi Puji. Okay. Terima kasih, Pratiwi. Yes, because there is no, there is no problem. What is this? Very good. It is just a definition for what is malnutrition. What's the problem? There's no problem. What is the focus of the research? There's no focus of the research. Does it tell the editor or the peer reviewer what exactly your manuscript for publication is about? No. This is just a definition for malnutrition. Sadly, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, this mistake is common among novice writers when they want to submit their manuscripts for publication. They assume, oh, because I'm writing about, I give them a definition for malnutrition, the editor and the peer reviewer will know that my paper is about the need to grow more high-quality rice in Isan for the use of children who are suffering from malnutrition. And the problem I'm trying to show is A, B, C, and D. All we will get is, this is a definition for malnutrition. Where is the focus of your problem? So, how do we write a good introduction, ladies and gentlemen? In two sentences, state the background of the problem you are researching. In two sentences, state the gap in information, the tension in the area of research, or the question that needs answering. In two sentences, state out what the focus of your research is. And in two sentences, state how your research will provide a probable solution. Not a definitive solution, but a probable solution to the problem. So if you look at the next page or the next slide in your handouts, I have given you two bullet points for each of these for, for you to write on. So I'm going to give you... 10 minutes, 10 minutes into it, 10 minutes after that, there will be a break, okay? <laughs> there will be a break. We are, ver we are very fond of our breaks in Thailand, right? If we don't get a break, or if we don't give the students the break, the students will raise up in revolution against the Ajans. <laughs> okay? So, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 7 minutes to write an introduction right, that states the background of the problem you are researching, shows the gap or the, of information or the tension, two sentences that state out what the focus of your research is, and what kind of solu probable solution that your research will provide. Okay? Seven minutes from now. Go. And if you have a question, please raise your hand. I will come to you.